Cage 56 on Saturday at the 10th of December. Riku the Discipline Urholin is one of the most feared grapplers in Europe. Being the European Noji champion, he's able to finish anybody on the ground. Andreas Hyperborean Knutson is an exceptional physical specimen. In addition to extreme power and good all-around fighting skills, he possesses a moustache to die for. Will the discipline add another submission victory to his name? Or will the Hyperborean manage to keep the fight standing and strike Urhalin's lights out? Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Riku Urhalin versus Andreas Knutson. To the blue corner, Andreas Knutson! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on our behalf as well. I'm your host, Sebastian Middle Martinez, calling the fights here at Cage 55 alongside pro fighter and Finland's very own Alexi the Giant Toivonen. Tonight we have nine spectacular fights lined up for you, and to kick things off first, we have at 93 kilograms Sweden's Andreas Knudson ready to enter the cage. Alexi, how are you feeling ahead of tonight's blockbuster event? I'm extremely excited to be here. I'm very, very happy with the car we have today. I think all of the nine fights are going to be absolutely action-packed. And I mean, starting off here at 93 kilograms, that is, talk about starting off with a bang as we have Andreas Hyperborean Knudson ready to enter the cage. Not just a Hyperborean though, also hyper-intelligent. He has what he calls himself high-functioning autism, and he has an IQ of about 140 and is a member of Mensa. To put that into perspective, the average human IQ is between 85 and 115. So he's a bit of an odd guy, but he definitely makes it work both inside and outside the cage. And just look at the physique. Massively strong. I'm not saying his IQ wouldn't work here, but look at the mustache, look at the <laughs> physique. So I'm very excited. I, I want to see what kind of challenge he brings to Rick Urholin. Well, I, I've, I've seen him at training like pick up and slam proper heavyweights, like proper, proper heavyweights, not just blown up light heavyweights and middleweights. He is incredibly strong. It, it has led him, basically the, the beginning of his career was mostly strength. Andreas Nilsson! And here he has entered the cage for his pro debut and expectations sure are high. Stoic as he usually is with a world-class mustache. Riku Urhalin! Well, talk about night and day in terms of... All right, here we have the opponent, Finland's own Riku Orholin, the disciple. And like I said, I mean, night and day between their entrance music, styles. I mean, look at him, he looks like a rock star. And well, he has long live rock and roll tattooed on his chest. So that seems pretty fitting in my mind. Yeah, he's an avid guitar player as far as I understand. But si no. singer and guitar player, check out his SoundCloud. He has a surprisingly good voice. But I think here in the cage today, I think his grappling is the thing that's going to make the most difference if he's going to win the fight. Uh, Nogi European champion, multiple time Finnish champion and ADCC European medalist. So 
is one of the top heavy or light heavyweight grapplers in all of Europe. Oh, definitely. I mean, if he gets his opponent to the mat, it could be over in a matter of seconds as opposed to minutes. Just very, very slick on the ground. Didn't really get to show that properly, like what he's really capable of in his pro debut. He ended up coming up short there, got finished in the first round, and, you know, it could be a little bit of nerves. Of course, it always is. I mean, he got pushed to pro MMA without having a single amateur MMA fight in between, and that can be quite a bit of a leap. He definitely has the credentials to back it up. I mean, like you said, no gay champion, and ADCC European medalist. But of course, it is a little bit of a different thing stepping into a cage, especially this cage. It so is. let's see if perhaps his nerves have been put in check. And of course, he's got his brother, Jesse Orolin, in his corner, a great fighter Rick as well. Orolin. And here we have the tail of tape. Uh, both guys pretty much identical. Uh, Rico Rolin has a little bit of a reach advantage, and Andres Nutson have a, has a few centimeters of height advantage, and both guys' experience is pretty much the same. The Swedish fighter weighing 92.4 kilos, ladies and gentlemen, Areas Hyperborean Nelson! <laughs> Finding out the red corner, a Pori based Finnish fighter weighing 92.8 kilos, ladies and gentlemen, Riku the Discipline! All right, here we go. First fight of the night, ready to kick things off. But I mean, blink and you just might miss it. Both of you guys have fight ending capabilities. But I definitely think that Knudsen is going to want to keep this one on the feet on account of all the grappling credentials that his opponent has. Don't you think so, Alexi? Definitely. I think on paper, at least, it's a striker versus grappler. But I'm intrigued to see what kind of uh, problems Knudsen's physicality will bring to the fight. Well, that's the thing. He has very, very good conditioning. He trains with some great guys, including Andreas uh, uh, Alexander Lindgren, who we'll see later on tonight as well. Touch of the gloves, and we are underway. Knudsen, of course, very, very into mythology and such things. And actually, a couple years ago, he, his carotid artery burst. He was close to dying, was operated on for eight years. He said he visited Valhalla, but emerged, but came back to Midgard. Now that Rico is trying to close the distance, which I think is what he should do, and started out a lot more aggressive than in his pro debut earlier this year. And it could just be, you know, shaking off those cobwebs, you know, just, he's got his first fight over and done with. Now he's here, he's ready to go, he's got a home, home field advantage. And this is exactly where he wants to be. He is very good up against the cage. You see those knees there, but he's landing very well. But it's not a secret. Newton's corner and Vastor's fight club, what Rico wants to do. So I think, at least I assume, that Andreas has prepared for uh, long periods of wrestling against the cage in his condition in his top notch. So I want to see if, if, if Rico can pull something off from this body lock position, or will Andreas try to separate or th turn things around? Oh, yeah, as you said, I mean, no secret what Rico really wants to do. And as you mentioned, Vestigo's Fight Club, kind of known as a striker's club. Obviously, it is MMA. They do train on all aspects of the, of the sport. But they kind of have a pension for striking. And that definitely benefits Knudsen in this matchup. Good balance so far by Knudsen. Knudsen's most recent bout was uh, his last amateur bout against Arlene Berisha of Norway, who steamrolled the competition in the IMF World Cup. Oh, look at that. Body lock take off for Uralin. And this is where Rico Uralin really shines with those grappling credentials. He should be at home here, but we'll see how he has adapted his grappling game to MMA, especially the di big difference between grappling and MMA. A lot of the people try to work their way up back to standing position, whether as in uh, grappling, they try to recover guard, work their submissions off their back, and I don't think like, that's what Knudsen is going to do, or <laughs> should do, at least in my opinion. 
I agree completely. And yeah, like you said, it is a different game once you throw strikes into the mix. I've heard several fighters say something along the lines that you can be a BJJ black belt, but once you start getting punched in the face, you turn into a white belt. But look at this, Erlen steps into full mount. Great way to start things off, and he's got more than half a round left to go. I think he was fighting very calm and collected. Good control. And I think they are emphasizing that, looking for a submission. But I want to see if, if he starts to posture up and drop, down, hammer down some elbows and punches to create a, create a bit of an opening for the submission. This is definitely a testament to that bear-like strength that Woodrowman possesses. Strikes there. As mentioned, he's from uh, Pori in Finland, which, you know, just pretty small small town of about 80,000 inhabitants but interesting fact was Radio Pori was one of Finland's first ever independent radio stations so they have one little thing that they can be proud of and hopefully for them <laughs> Rico Urlin will be the second and Rico's brother Jesse Urlin is one of the top fighters from Finland at the moment and Gesa is known for very aggressive ground and pound and similar grappling credentials to Rico so Rico is kind of following in his brother's footsteps a bit on a former representative of Swedish national team and amateur MMA. He did have some good showings. He actually made it to the semi-finals one year, but ended up being submitted by Finnish Kirill Andreev, who we've seen here in cage as well. Now Rigo is trying to posture up. He's trying to create a bit of a frame between pushing uh, Knutsen's head down so he can do exactly that. Oh, wow. Those are some hard shots with Murilin. Can't Knudsen survive? Oh, look at that! <laughs> Good turn. That's the physicality of Knudsen. Now, get, but 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 Rico is no slouch off of his back either. So don't let his phys physique like trick you. I think Knudsen still wants to stand up from this position because Rico is now attacking Noma Plata and he's trying to try and switch to a foot attack. Going for the leg. Now the tables have turned a little bit. It's Knutson with his opponent up against a cage, but perhaps he should have disengaged. Has some blood in that world-class mustache. And of course, it takes so much energy having a fighter as big as Uralin on top of you. I mean, every little adjustment you make, you're carrying their weight. 100%. And with the grappling credentials, it's absolutely suffocating to have someone who is big, but also emphasizes top control and has done that for over 10 years on an international top level. Oh, yeah. So it's Definitely well, hard. That's the thing, he knows how to care, how to make Knutson carry his weight, so that is most detrimental to Knutson. Just how to be top heavy in the right position, so yeah, absolutely correct, Alexi. And a pretty star strong start to the round for Urlin, a, a good end to it for Knutson. But there was a lot of top position for the hometown fighter, so... I think I think the first round definitely goes to Urlin. But yeah. you got you got to give credit to Knutson, because uh, he still escaped. He was still able to get back on his feet, and I think that gives him, probably gives him a bit of confidence going the second round. He defended the submission of offense of Urhalin, and he worked his way back to his feet, so he'll know what to expect in the second round. Out. Now we'll see if he starts more aggressive striking and tries to make something happen early in the round before Urhalin has a chance to clinch. <laughs> Knutson ready to go. Second round just about to begin, and here we go. <laughs> A bit not successful in touch of gloves until about the third or fourth attempt. <laughs> That's the thing, when you've been taken down, you've spent a lot of time on your back, it can make you tentative in terms of striking as well, because you might be a little bit afraid of overextending yourself and you know, leaving an opening for your, for your opponent. That doesn't seem to be the case right now, though. And I think also that uh, probably the Vastaros Fight Club team told Knudsen between the rounds that he needs to be offensive. So even if you, tr if you tend to 
be more tentative when someone tries to take you down and has a dangerous grappling game. You need to pressure. You need to use your strikes standing because it makes the takedown a lot harder instead of just waiting and trying to counter mm. and giving, giving the start and the feint to the person trying to take you down. That was some good defense there for Knudsen and some offense pouring on here. Uruin might be a little bit shaken by some of those strikes. It looked like Knudsen landed pretty flush on at least two of them. Newton really defying the odds. He was told by doctors after surgery that maybe he could play golf. But look, here he is inside the cage in his pro debut. Oh, kick gets caught, but... Oh, wow. Was that a bit of a slip from Newton? Could be slipped and then maybe a bit of a balancing. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of weight coming behind that kick that he caught. And now there's a lot of weight on top of him. And of course, this is exactly where Urolin wants to be. Plenty of time left to work here. Trying to get his leg free so he can pass the full mount. And Alexei, if we flip the script here, what would Knutso need to do to improve his position from here? Same thing he did in the first round. He cannot let Rico control him for long periods of time. Once Rico starts to punch or posture, he needs to move. He needs to create opportunities to scramble and get back to his feet. but he cannot lay here and let Riku control the distance. And now, now he's grabbing, but this is risky because it opens up the opportunity that Riku can attack his arms. Yeah. So if he can tie up a little bit and bridge like he did in the first round, excellent. But if he can't, at least he needs to control the distance between the two fighters. Because if Riku controls that, he's the one grabbing the wrist. He will be the one dropping the elbows, and he's the one pushing the action and, and uh, creating the opportunities to finish. Look for a little moment like Urlin maybe was thinking about his submission attempt. He's got the ban oh, look, yeah, he's trying to isolate Knutson's right arm. Which would be a good move for him for sure. Oh, Knutson giving up his back. Looks like Urlin yeah, has got both hooks in. Oh, heavy shots raining down from Riku Urlin. The referee is taking a close look at this. Okay, Knutson safe, but the question is for how long? Heavy shot, and that is it. Rico Oro scores the first win of his pro career. Second round TKO. Good performance from Rick Urholin. He was still a bit shaking when it came to striking, but now definitely was clear what he wanted to do. Take the fight to the ground, get to mount, control, conservative ground and pound, and once he found the opportunity, then turn the volume up a bit, and he got the finish with TKO. Yeah, well, I mean, he definitely seems to have learned some lessons from his pro debut. Of course, you know, being such a storied grappler, it'll take a little bit of time for his striking to get on the same level, but... As we saw here, he can make it work regardless. And there's his BJJ black belt. Tired for sure, he was working hard to get that finish. Look for a moment like Knutson might survive, but as soon as Udolin started pouring it back on, then yeah, it was over and done with. And that is the risk if you end up underneath the Disciple. And I mean, just clear-cut evidence here. He is just a monster in composition. Rigo is a contracted fighter for Cage. So we'll see him again on December 10th on Cage 56. So I'll be interested. He made this kind of improvements during the summer. So I want to see what he can do before December. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mo Karisinkone has gone to stop this fight after 3 minutes and 25 seconds of the second round. We are by TKO Riku the Discipline Uralin! There you have it, Riku, the disciple Uralin scores the first win of his pro career.
does it against the Hyperborean Andreas Knudson. And talk about a way to make a splash and to kick things off with a bang here at cage 55. Of course, tough loss for Andreas Knudson, but he can definitely get back on the horse for sure. Riku, onneksi olkoon. Hieno voitto. Kiitos. Näytti, että ensimmäinen erä oli aika hyvin sulla hallussa. Sitten siinä jossain vaiheessa kaveri pääsi vähän pystyssä pommittamaan. Miltä, miltä tuntuu? Oliko silti homma hanskassa koko ajan? Ei, ei ollut. Kyllä se tuntui, että se vittu karkaa. Ha. Sä sait hyvän lyönnin kuitenkin vastustajaa siitä pystystä ja päästi alas mattoon. Okei. Okay. Missä kohtaa näytti omasta mielestä siltä, että tämä saattaisi ratketa tähän? No. Siinä lopussa, kun se oli vatsalla ja mä löin sitä, joku löi tuohon vitun reunaa kolme kertaa. Mä luulin, että kymmenen sekkaa. Sitten mä olin vähän niin kuin, okei, en mä käytä kaikkia voimia tähän, jos on kymmenen sekkaa enää. Sitten se vaan jasko ja huusi, että lyö, lyö. Vittu vaan kerran loppuu vai? So, Riku is saying here, he thought that... Mut kaikkien näiden käänteiden jälkeen joka tapauksessa hieno voitto, paljon onnea. Kiitos kaikkea, joka tulitte kattoon. Ja hän oli silleen, että oh my god, I need to really turn the volume up. Tähän tota... Jos toiset tietää, mitä se mun ensimmäinen ottelu meni. Niin voi sanoa, että ensimmäistä kertaa mun kamppailuudella, niin... Paineet pääsivät ihan kasvaa, että kyllä viimeinen neljä kuukautta, kun tätä varten on valmistauduttu, niin... Tämä on aika vitumainen helpotus. Kiitos kaikille. Riku Urhali! And Riku said there it was a big relief to get the victory. Like for the first time in his martial arts career, he felt the pressure after his debut loss in April. And that makes sense. I mean, he's a very animated character for sure, but getting that win, it's got to feel good, especially after coming up short last time. Cage 56 on Saturday at the 10th of December.